just curious about a ballpark figure. How many times have you installed Gen 2? Uh, hmm. Well, well, enough times that I know the handbook off by heart. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, pro I'd say probably in the 50, 60 <laughs> figures. But, you know, I'm setting up development machines and stuff like that. Right, so, right. So, um, yeah, you know, so yeah, I've got like a, a load of machines that are just there for different setups so I can test a, a bug on something if someone comes up. Um, like I've got a, a virtual machine that actually emulates a, an i8, an i486. Uh huh. Um, and then obviously I've got one for every CPU if I need it. So. Oh my God. So yeah, m most people don't install Gen 2 as many times as I do. I mean, I know people that's got one going for 20 years now. No, I actually know a few people that's got the, the original. 20 year install going i don't know how wow. they do that yeah that's that's the people that you want to be looking up to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like keeping a system going that long and not messing up fair play to you yeah that's that's actually really cool um yeah i i, I saw this uh this article a while back about someone taking the it was done like you know i think like 2020 or something they took the original arch iso and then tried to update it all the way up to where we are now and there have been it, it with like a rolling release like the idea is you can keep going you know until you feel like breaking it uh but occasionally there have been changes i'm sure gen 2 is the same thing where there have been yeah. changes in how things are structured like maybe repo changes how maybe keys are structured uh how maybe like packages are structured things like that where if you tried to do it now you're gonna run into some issues even though during like when it was happening it just rolled through perfectly fine you can actually do it so if you i've tried it on arch from uh i think i found a 2009 install somewhere mm -hmm. that i got my daughter to install um <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's quite a funny story actually i'll tell you later on um and i tried upgrading it and it failed catastrophically mm -hmm. but what arch and gen 2 both have is a git system where you can take a snapshot mm -hmm. of what the tree looked like at a certain time so um let's say you start in 2014 mm -hmm. you can take a snapshot six months um from that point that it was installed mm -hmm. do the update then take another one six months later do the update again and just do it as if it was that system you did um, there's actually a guide for it on the Gen 2 wiki. I think it's um, upgrade Gen 2 from ancient hardware or something. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Old old Gen 2 install, I think it's called. Uh, if you can find it, send me a link. I want to have a look at it. Yeah, let me just quickly. Ah, here we go. I think this is the backup version. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll pop this into Discord for yeah, you. Easy. It should be this one. Yeah, so it basically just shows you. It's got different ways of doing it. It's got the easy, the hard way. Uh -huh. But, I mean, if you just take the snapshots of the... Um, it, I'd say just use the Git um, branches. That's the one I'm after, isn't it? Mm -hmm. you, can, um, yeah, you, can, you can easily do it. It's not Plan that hard. A. It just takes a while. <laughs> Plan A, just go for it. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Yeah, don't do that. It normally breaks. <laughs> yeah, I would guess so. It's, it's so fun. I've had people come in with a two-year-old system on... Mm -hmm. um, on some of the support places and it's so fun trying to fix their system getting around it especially if they like you know are interested in learning with you at the same mm -hmm. time so you get to teach people some new things they've never done before um while fixing their system and learning a few new things yourself as well that, that's a real challenge if you can do one of those yeah no that's uh that that's not for me i'm just gonna i'm just gonna keep my system rolling and we're not gonna worry about it i'll, I'll yeah, deal just, with just keep it updated don't, i'll don't deal with some it. keys being out of date sometimes maybe like a key is lost they have to like delete it fine but like <laughs> i'm not yeah no <laughs> we're not we're not doing this one uh that's oh, you're sure. come on try it once try come, it. come back sure maybe if i decide to do a uh a stream on the main channel again. I will. Uh, I'll do something like this and just. Well, my to do an LFS. Nothing's as hard as that. Well, nothing's as tedious as that. I, I say? It's actually, not hard, is it? No, it's not hard. It it's as well documented. Maybe more so than Gen two. Like LFS is just copy and paste commands, and you'll finish yeah. it. Um, yeah, exactly. So it, we we always joke that you don't learn anything in LFS except for how to use tar properly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's yeah, pretty actually, much that's a good point. 
Yeah. I mean, I've never used the tar manual ever again. I think I last did LFS in 2004. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I've, I've known how to use tar ever since. Yeah, I... There was there were some mistakes I made during that LFS. Oh, trip. yeah. Uh, the worst thing, isn't it, that you don't find out you made a mistake till you're four chapters further or, you know, into the next chapter, and then you realise you make the mistake. Yeah, And trying yeah. to figure out how to revert the mistakes. Awful. <laughs> My... <laughs> the best mistake is... It wasn't even a LFS mistake. It was a mistake of not doing LFS. Uh, so... I was doing this in a virtual machine. Please do LFS in a virtual machine. You're gonna, or on a like dedicated system that you don't care about whatever's on yeah. it. Um. So I was doing LFS. I. So you know how there's that variable that's like this is the LFS user. Make sure this variable is set to the LFS user, so that every time you do a command, it inputs the correct user. Um, yeah, I think so, vaguely. So it's been a fair few years since I've done it, nearly 19 years now, but I vaguely remember it. I um, didn't set that user, and <laughs> no. I got to the point where it was um, changing the ownership of the system over to the LFS user, and when the variable's not set, uh... I kind of changed the ownership of my entire system to root. Well, nice. <laughs> so <laughs> it kind of broke things. Did you restart or did you fix it? I I fixed the LFS section and I managed to work around it with the rest of the VM. So I, I didn't worry about it. And that's pretty impressive because most people just give up and restart. And I say that's the part you're learning from LFS. It's the mm. troubleshooting. So, props yeah, to I, you for actually figuring it out. I never actually finished LFS. I, I, I got really bored with it. Like it's it's boring as hell, isn't it? Like every, you hear people go on about how great it is and all the things you're gonna learn. Mm. And anyone that's done it knows that once you finished it, you think, "Why did I waste that time? Like, yeah. I've learned nothing." If I wasn't doing it on stream, I would not have done it at, like, full stop. Um, but where did I get up to? Let's see if I can find... Uh, here we go. Stable... Where was I? I want to... S- oh, wait, is it... No, okay. I, I thought... I guess I must have cleaned out my cookies already because it doesn't show what I've clicked on. Um, I think I was somewhere in... I was, like, right near the end, actually. I think I was... Up to like system configuration, so just before making the system bootable. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I think I got to, I got all the way to the desktop. Mm. I, mean, I got GNOME two running. Wow. And then literally, I got, I got, I got to there, got it all working, had that moment of, yeah, how good am I? And then went, what right, do do with this? What, what, what am I doing now? If I, I want to make this usable, oh, I can install Portage onto this. And then at that point, I'm like, I should just install Gen two and flattened it and restart <laughs> it again. Yo. Okay, so what was the point? <laughs> I always think of LFS as that Sunday car um, thing. You know, you get the the old man driving that you know <laughs> tunes it all up, makes it nice. Um, but you've got a real machine somewhere else that when you want to do you know, yep. real work. But, yeah, exactly. Although I have seen some crazy people out there, and they're very very smart people that run it as a daily driver. But mm-hmm. it's not for me. No, it's it. <sighs> It's a bit much. It's a like I get it. It's a really cool idea, and it te- like if you if you want to pay attention to what's going on, it really does teach you a lot. Especially if like in the <clears throat> in the bits where it just gives you a big text dump of like commands to run. If you go and check what each of those commands do and what each of the options do, you can learn a lot about what's going on. But if you're just going through it, you know, going through the motions. You're not gonna learn anything, really. Like, yeah, I can, I can kind of see that. I mean, obviously, I came from uh, Gen two when I did it, so I've the, the stuff that I would have learned from there, I've already learned from yeah. using Gen two. So for me, there was no better. Maybe if you're using Ubuntu um, um, or some, or Fedora, you maybe you will learn something because you you don't really get into troubleshooting issues mm. that you'll hit on that. But <clears> I personally think I'll have a better time with Gen two. The other thing the troubleshooting you learn, uh... on that. Sorry. Yeah, no, let's carry on. 
I was gonna say the other thing you learned really well is how to use some basic make commands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and your patching as well. I'm pretty good at that. I can patch mm -hmm. anything nowadays. I can even write. I can, I can actually, I'm terrible at coding, but I can mm -hmm. write a small patch. Yep. Um, I learned that in Gen two, not not in LFS, but.